Dear viewers, this episode of Game Over, we have more than a bit of a pickle. A uh, pickle that, unfortunately, the multiverse theory can't solve for us. A pickle in which we slowly have to digest as we discover how it came to be. How do Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde kill Pac-Man? <laughs> That's our question for this episode. How do these colourful cast of characters possibly do any damage to Pac-Man, going so far as to kill him three times? Well, as we all know from movies, cartoons, video games, and other forms of entertainment, ghosts can walk through walls, disappear, and fly, and are much more unique than any other guys. It was then that he knew what he had to do, he had to stop all the ghosts were coming through... I'm getting off track here, but seriously, how do ghosts kill Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man simply by coming into contact with them? Now, I know what you're thinking. Perhaps Pac-Man is just really fragile. Like, if a strong wind blew hard enough, he would shatter like glass. If that were the case, he wouldn't be able to take such a beating in Smash Bros, now would he? No, this isn't a matter of fragility, this is a matter of what causes instantaneous death upon contact with four ghosts. So what are our options? Well, gamma radiation, microwave radiation, vaporizing, bomonuclear explosion, and energy absorption. That's quite a selection of ways to go. So, in order to understand radiation, we're gonna have to understand the basics, like what a wrench in is. A rentgen is a unit of ionizing radiation. Essentially, in layman's terms, that's the amount of radiation present in the area at one time. Now, we're not going to get too much into radiation, but we are going to go over different amounts of rentgens. It's quite simple, really. 500 rentgens are fatal to humans. 5,000 rentgens causes incapacitation almost immediately and 2,000 to 10,000 rentgens causes death from a few minutes to a day. However, this isn't enough as Pac-Man dies in three seconds within coming into contact of our ghost friends. So what about microwave radiation? Well, unfortunately, we do have an estimate of how long it would take. You see, in 2005, an Ohio mother placed a one-month-old daughter in a microwave and ran it for what is thought to be little over two minutes. Based on this, a fully grown adult would also be able to survive this long when exposed to microwaves. But this isn't fast enough to do the trick. So radiation doesn't seem to be fast enough for what we need. We need something instant, quite literally, but do what processes are instant. Vaporizing, an instant way of getting rid of those pesky pack people. Now, vaporizing is the complete separations of all atoms within a molecule. Essentially, it breaks down the atomic bonds and allows the atoms to run wild, turning a solid or a liquid into a vapor. Could you do this with a large living organism, though? Yes! Uh, but to do so would require a large amount of energy. 2.99 gigajoules to be exact. This is the exact amount required to vaporize a human body. So we can assume that in order to vaporize Pac-Man, we would require roughly around the same amount of energy in order to do so. But this doesn't answer our question how our colorful ghosts actually kill Pac-Man. They vaporize him, but how? Perhaps through the use of a thermonuclear explosion? A thermonuclear explosion is the result of, well, a nuclear bomb exploding. Ignoring the resulting gamma radiation that would hit first, then followed by the intense levels of visible light, infrared light, and ultraviolet radiation, you would be hit by a thermal flash. This would, in layman's terms, cause every part of your body to either catch fire, melt, evaporate, or disintegrate down to your very skeleton. It will then begin to decay that until the oncoming shockwave will scatter it, leaving the heat to degrade what's left of you. This all happens, mind you, at speeds faster than sound, so you won't be able to feel anything for very long. The heat itself is around 100 million degrees Celsius. 
and is enough heat to melt roughly 136,000 tons of steel. Now I know what you're thinking, how do ghosts cause a thermonuclear explosion? Well, did you ever consider the fact that they might not be ghosts? I mean, yes, they look like ghosts and they do go through solid objects with the exception of Pac-Man, but aside from those specific traits, they can't really fly, disappear, or walk through walls of the maze that Pac-Man has to go through. Isn't that interesting? Which is why I don't think that Inky, Blinky, Pinky and Clyde are neither nukes waiting to go off or ghosts. Why? Well, considering that amount of heat and force is enough to demolish buildings, disintegrate living organisms, and generally destroy the surrounding area, why is it that the walls remain unaffected? If our colourful ghost friends are producing thermonuclear explosions, or at least the heat generated by a thermonuclear explosion, then why aren't the walls melted, or better yet, destroyed? because they don't create a thermonuclear explosion. This, as you could imagine, put me into a bit of a rut. How could ghosts kill Pac-Man yet not affect the surrounding area? I figured that the ghosts were releasing an awful amount of energy, perhaps heat or even gamma radiation, and then it hit me like a nuke to the face. I've been talking an awful lot about energy this episode, yet it's gotten me nowhere. What if I had it all wrong? What if Inky, Blinky, Pinky and Clyde aren't going to release a large amount of energy, but are instead going to absorb it? And that is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. But it's about as crazy as ghosts chasing someone around a maze. What if Inky, Blinky, Pinky and Clyde are beings made of pure energy? And being that they are this, they need to feed on energy. Picture this. They're in a maze with pellets and dust balls. Yes, they provide needed energy, but not enough energy that they require to perpetuate their existence. Then, in walks Pac-Man, a large source of energy. So being that they are organisms of pure energy themselves, they're gunning for Pac-Man at all times. The only thing Pac-Man has to help himself are the dust balls that allow Pac-Man to consume those four colourful ghosts, probably containing an enzyme that allows Pac-Man's body to break down the ghost energy into glucagon and glycogen, and other such biological substance that the body needs to survive. See, my evidence for this is more a lack of evidence than anything else, and I know that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but hear me out. Energy, much like light, cannot phase through solid objects, uh, with the exception of some photons and only if an object was vibrating at the correct frequency. Which is why the ghosts can't pass through walls. Pac-Man cannot completely destroy them as per the laws of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed, only turned into other forms of matter. Which also explains why Pac-Man can consume everything aside from their eyes. It also explains how Pac-Man can actually eat the ghosts to begin with, and how the ghosts are able to reform from just their eyes. And the fact that the ghosts leave no actual trace of their interaction with the environment. So, if all this is true, then we figured out what the ghosts are, how they kill Pac-Man, what the dust balls are, and why Inky, Blinky, Pinky and Clyde don't consume them. Unfortunately, unlike in my previous episodes where we've been able to come up with a clear-cut answer, this one isn't so easy, and there isn't sufficient evidence to suggest that this hypothesis is in fact true. It's just pulling at string threads that seem to loosely connect with each other. This is the best hypothesis that I can come up with, with the lack of evidence that we have. Which is why I want you guys, yes you the audience, to come up with your own hypothesis of how our colourful ghost friends are able to kill Pac-Man. Leave your ideas down in the comments and see if you can come up with something better. Genuinely, I'm interested in seeing what you guys can come up with, so make it a good one, okay? As for me, I have a new episode to make regarding a certain samurai and his godlike speed. 
Cheerio for now. Dun, dun.